Today I am going to show you a very interesting oxidizing agent. This is potassium ferrate. The molecule of potassium ferrate looks similar to another oxidizing agent you likely know, potassium permanganate. But the interesting part is that potassium ferrate is a much stronger oxidizing agent than potassium permanganate. For that reason I put some potassium ferrate onto a piece of paper and we are going to do a few experiments with it. This is the first one. Unlike potassium permanganates, potassium ferrate is very unstable in aqueous solutions. When it touches water, it immediately decomposes and forms elemental oxygen. We could have tested for the presence of oxygen using a glowing splinter, but unfortunately we don't have that much ferrate. In alkaline solutions, ferrate does not decompose as quickly. Therefore we used some potassium hydroxide in water and then added the ferrate. Potassium ferrate powder might look black and boring, but as you can see, when you pack it into an alkaline solution, you get this beautiful reddish solution. You now know what happens when you put it into water and what happens when you put it into an alkaline solution. In an acid, it decomposes even more quickly. The acid of ferrate is even less stable than the salts of it. It's a strong oxidizing agent and it can even oxidize ammonia to nitrogen gas. Because ammonia is alkaline, this reaction is rather slow, but it's happening. Before proceeding to show you even more reactions with ferrate and also how to make it, I would like to thank Laboratorium Discounter for providing me with this chemical. Without them my channel would not be where it is today and therefore I would appreciate if you check them out. You can even get a 7% discount with the code on screen or in the description. Primary alcohols are oxidized to carboxylic acids by using potassium ferrate. And as potassium ferrate is not stable in water, I again prepared an alkaline solution of potassium ferrate. Before adding the ferrate, I added two drops of benzyl alcohol. Before adding the ferrate, I smelled the solution and it smelled like benzyl alcohol. Immediately after adding it, I smelled it again and it smelled much stronger, maybe benzaldehyde. I then let it sit for a minute and shook the test tube and the smell completely disappeared, which makes sense. It was oxidized to benzoic acid, which then reacted to form non-smelling potassium benzoate. Because it's a stronger oxidizing agent than potassium permanganate, we should be able to make potassium permanganate with potassium ferrate. For this, we needed some manganese nitrate. I've actually never seen it before and I was surprised at the vibrant pink color. Again, I added potassium hydroxide, dissolved everything in water and then added the ferrate. This characteristic color is an indicator for the presence of permanganate. The alkaline solution of ferrate had a different color. If you are looking for a way to make potassium permanganate, do not use this route as potassium ferrate is much more expensive and harder to make. Lastly, I wanted to make some bromine water by adding ferrate to a hydrobromic acid. This is nothing special and you can use almost any oxidizer for it, but I think that it would look cool and therefore I'd try it anyways. You want to see some fire and therefore I'm going to show it to you. This is potassium ferrate on a piece of paper and I lit it up. Unfortunately it does not look like it's a strong oxidizing agent and I don't know why. I wanted to do a comparison with a classic experiment. Glycerin on potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate is on the left and potassium ferrate is on the right. This is glycerin, a viscous and boring looking liquid. I tried to drop the same amount of glycerin onto both of the substances at the same time, but I failed. The results were still obvious. After a minute, the potassium permanganate glycerin caught on fire and with the ferrate not a lot happened. I measured the temperature, but the potassium ferrate and glycerin mix did not want to auto ignite. It still got pretty hot. Therefore I tried to help it along by lighting it on fire, but it's boring and it did not light up. One way to make potassium ferrate is to mix freshly prepared iron hydroxide with sodium hypochlorite in an excess of potassium hydroxide. To do this I put some potassium hydroxide and iron 3 chloride into the speaker and added the ionized water. Upon adding the water you immediately get this brown precipitate, which is iron 3 hydroxide. When adding the iron 3 hydroxide to the sodium hypochlorite, you get a somewhat purple mixture which cannot be seen that well on camera, but it turned purple and I think I should have added more potassium hydroxide because it would have been even more obvious if I did. And there you go, I simply wanted to show you this very interesting oxidizing agent and there are plenty more oxidizing agents like iodine pentoxide which releases oxygen and iodine when heated and also mercury perchlorate. 
By the way, I finally got everything for starting out with my massive scale Cubane monocarboxylic acid synthesis. So stay tuned for that one because I'm soon going to begin. Also I would like to thank all of my Patreons and other supporters and everyone who watched this video because without you guys I would not be able to dive into this massive scale Cubane preparation. 